you know, signs and wonders and miracles are great, but that's not what he's after. Actually, for him, that's all secondary. It's not even the most important issue. The most, <clears throat> even Jesus said, it said to his own disciples, if you cannot believe me for my nature, please at least believe me for the signs and miracles. You see, signs and miracles are not the issue. The issue is the intention of his heart is that we become one with him and one with one another. There is a principle that clicks in in the invisible realm. When you become what he is. So in the, in, in the word of God, there are only four, um, four nouns that describe who God is. Everything else is an adverb or an adjective. Those four things that the word says that he is are God is light, God is love, God is fire, and God is spirit. So if we take those four things and we focus on becoming the fullness of the measure of the stature of Christ, which is what we are to do right now, uh, and, and that's where we're headed. We're in a state of preparation. We, we, we are actually in the realms of the spirit already perfect because the free gift, that which was given to us when we confess with our mouth and believe in our heart, we're already exalted to the right hand of God the Father, but the issue is manifesting our position there so that our position there becomes our condition down here. So what the word says is the greatest thing that he is, is love. I just want to talk to you about the depths of his love today because the depths of his love is the source for the downflow of all of the signs and miracles. So today, I want to just talk to you about the source of all of those things. Everybody wants to hear the stories, and I love the stories too, and they're so fun, and they do move people. But it's kind of like, um, kind of like when Christopher says, the thing we need to deal with is discipline. The thing I want to deal with before we get into the Q&A is love. What does it mean to be consumed by his love? It's, it's, the, it, it's being consumed by his love, number one, that releases you from all fear, all worry, all anxiety. People come to me all the time and they say, aren't you afraid to go to the cannibals and the headhunters? You know they still kill people and still eat people, right? I mean, the week before I went there, they killed and ate eight missionaries. So when the Lord says go, the, word, the, the thing that really changes them, shifts them, rearranges them, is not my anointing. The thing that changes them is the frequency of love. And therefore, when they pick up their spears and their arrows, it's not because... I'm so powerful that they can't kill me. It's because they hear the frequency of love. Their spirit picks up on it, and their soul and their body don't understand why they can't kill me. But the reason why they can't is because they're hearing something that every single human being in the earth wants more than anything else more than housing, more than food, more than anything else, the internal desire of every human being is their need to be loved. That's, what, that, that's the good news of the gospel, is that Jesus is <laughs> the one who meets the need of our love. So as I was sitting over in my chair, and what I mentioned was my heart began to be stretched. My heart began to be stretched. Sometimes that happens, it feels almost like I'm having a heart attack. 
And in many different instances, and in fact, I was sharing with several of the people that went to our mentoring group last year, that last year, just about this same time, I had a visitation of Yeshua. And I was just in a normal prayer time, Bible study time, in my, in my living room, and all of a sudden he showed up and he began to smother me with kisses, literally smother me with kisses. And when I say smother me, I meant my breath was so taken away, I thought I can't breathe. My body became totally dysfunctional and it was like whenever I get into a level of intimacy like that, I almost literally can't breathe, okay? After a very few minutes, he's just smothering me with all this love and with all these kisses. And I have been in the heart of the Father before, and I thought I really understood the depths of the love of God. But when he showed up and started smothering me with kisses, I hate to confess this, but after a few minutes, I had to almost beg him to stop. And the reason for that was I felt like if he didn't stop, my body was going to blow up into a million pieces and I could feel the frequency of my body going so high. I, I was afraid I was going to erupt into fire. And at the end of that time, he looked at me and he goes, you think, you think you understand the depths of my love. But he goes, this is this much of this much. And I thought to myself, Lord, I, I feel like I know the love of God, but it's really, really without end. Let's just take the most famous verse of all. When I first received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you know, I love Paul because Paul would say, I, pra I praise God that I speak in tongues more than all of you. And I thought to myself, speaking in tongues, when I received that, it was like I would literally go in my prayer closet for hours and hours and hours and just pray in tongues. And that was without understanding because we're praying mysteries that go above and beyond our understanding. So when I would go stand up in front of a church of 20,000 people and the pastor stands up and says, she came to prophesy over every one of us, I'm going, no, no, that's not why I came. I would stand up and these mysteries would come out of my mouth it didn't come at that moment. It came while I was in my prayer closet praying for hours and hours in mysteries. Do you know it's the, it's the only gift that is offered by God that is for our personal edification. So the word says it's to build up your most holy faith and to reveal mystery. How be it is you pray in mysteries. That means your mind doesn't always understand what it is you're praying. So I would get in the prayer closet and I would just spend days and hours and time just praying in tongues, not even having any idea what I was saying. But if I could pray in tongues for an entire year and had not love, it was nothing. What, that, what the word says is if I pray in the tongues of angels and did not express myself with love, my word would be reduced to the hollow sound of nothing more than a clanging single. If I were to have the gift of prophecy, I, I, when I first found out about prophecy, I didn't have any teaching. I didn't have anybody to tell me, you just take their hand, you just do this, you just say this, you just close, open up the eyes of your heart and say the thing. Nobody taught me all of that kind of thing. All I was in the Word one day in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, and the Word says earnestly desire the best gifts, but rather that you should prophesy. And I thought, Lord, what is prophesying? I don't even know what prophesying is. But all I did was I wanted the best gifts, and the Word is saying rather that you should prophesy, which means prophesying is better than raising the dead. It's the best gift, the most excellent gift. So I made a bargain with the Lord. And I said, Lord, I don't have any idea what this means. And I don't have even a clue how to prophesy. But I want this verse. So if you'll just show me how to prophesy, I promise I'll prophesy. The next week, <laughs> I went to the church. 
and we're just in worship and all of a sudden, bang, here comes this prophetic word and here's what my soul does. Are you sure that's really God? How do you know if that's your own mind? How do you know if you're making up those words? And how do you, it could be the devil, you know. So I'm sitting there having this argument with God, and all of a sudden across the room, somebody else stands up and gives the exact verbatim word that I was given. And I thought, oh my gosh, I've disappointed God. I've told him I'm going to do it. My, I mean, when, when, when that word fell on me, my knees are shaking. My heart is pounding. I'm sweats dripping all over me, you know. Is this really you? Is this really you? And then they stood up and they gave the word, okay? So I go home and I say, Lord, I'm so sorry. I told you, just give me an opportunity to prophesy and just give me one more chance, just one more chance. So the next week, I go to church. Somebody stands up and gives a message in tongues. Well, how many of you know, if you have a message in tongues in a group and you get the interpretation, the combination of the message in tongues and the interpretation is prophecy. So I'm sitting there, and they give a message in tongues, and I got the interpretation. And I'm thinking, oh, my heart starts pounding. My knees start shaking. I start sweating all over. Lord, how do I know if this is really you or if I'm making it up in my mind or if it is the devil? Now, you know, you, you have to discern that. And the third, so, so, so I'm standing there in the church, and while I'm standing there arguing with my soul, Somebody in the back of the church sits up and gives the verbatim prophecy that I just got. And I thought to myself, oh, I failed again. So I go back home and I'm crying. I'm in my, in my room just crying. Lord, I'm so sorry. I promised if you gave me this opportunity that I would do it. <laughs> just give me one more chance. Just one more chance. For the next six months, I didn't get a chance. But when the day came that somebody stood up and I had a prophetic word, I was so determined. I was not going to fail God again. I stood up and my voice leapt about three octaves. And I said, the spirit of the Lord would say, my shaking all over my body. And what came out was about judgment. <laughs> now, I, I'm, a, I'm a total mercy person. And I was so embarrassed because this word had to do with judgment. I, I left the church and I ran in and fell down on the floor crying, Oh God, judgment. I, I don't want to talk about judgment. I just want to talk about the love of God, you know. And uh, afterwards, the leader of the church comes in and he goes, Oh, Mrs. Cohen, that was the most magnificent, most anointed word ever given in our church. You were so anointed of God, your voice even changed. He didn't know it was because I was scared out of my socks. <laughs> my voice went all the way. He says, even your voice changed. <laughs> After that, I got into the gift of prophecy, and I prophesied over tens of thousands of people. And the thing of it is, is it brought so much joy to my life. But if I could prophesy accurately over every life, but had not love, it's nothing. Hi, I'm Nancy. I just want to thank you for joining us today. If you enjoyed what you heard, like and subscribe our YouTube channel. And if you're interested in lengthy, deeper teachings concerning the mysteries of God, contact us at sons.global and partner with us as we become co-workers and co-creators together with God for the establishment of His kingdom and His righteousness in all the earth.